confidence intervals are really important to understand and so if you're just learning about them this is the video for you now if you're looking for a particular way of calculating a confidence interval i do have videos where i go over that t values are, are very common in request because you deal with the degrees of freedom if that's what you're looking for i do have other videos they are in the description and i will be posting cards throughout so that you can see them this video is very much about the understanding of what a confidence interval is, not simply how to calculate it. So first things first, a confidence interval is a range. It's a range stating with a certain level of confidence where we think something is. So for example, if you're doing a mean approximation, uh, say with a T or Z test, you're saying that you're 95, 90, 99% confident that a value is within that confidence interval. That is to say, if you ran 100 different samples, that 95 of them are expected to have what's called the true value or the true mean or the mu within that confidence interval, and then five of them would not. So the five would be a type one error, a false positive, and the 95 would be correct. That's essentially what a confidence interval is. Now you can apply that in a variety of ways. Confidence intervals are equivalent to p-values in searching for significance. Say I had a confidence interval from 2 to 3.5 for some measurement. And the hypothesis that you were looking for was 1.5. And we see that 1.5 is not within that range. What that says is the sample you have is statistically significant compared to what was expected. The p-value would also likewise show that. So this is a way of validating your p-values. The confidence interval also gives you more information than the p-value. It gives you a range as opposed to whether or not it's simply significant like the p-value does. So if you had two ranges from two different samples, you could actually see if those samples overlap. If they do, compared to each other, those samples would be not statistically significant. But if you were comparing two samples and they were basically mutually exclusive, that is to say the ranges didn't overlap, those would be statistically significant. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section. I usually answer within a few hours. Thank you for watching and stay nerdy, my friends.